Hi, hello, and welcome back to The High Method. My name is Jen Hatz. I am the host of The High Method podcast and also the founder of The High Method, a holistic, integrative, and innovative approach to assessing and optimizing human health, well-being, and performance. And I am partnered with Neuroforce One, a human performance company that has been training champions for years. And they offer training and assessments in their facility as well as remote options available. And if you aren't already eating this, then you need to start. And we are talking about beans and legumes, the entire category of beans and legumes. So the most recent population studies about the nutrition intake, the nutritional behaviors and the nutrition status of the U.S. population has shown that the entire category of beans and legumes are far under, far low where we need to be. And that's a little bit of a, of a you know, red flag there that we're eating a high amount, actually, of the other food groups and specifically grains and meats. We're not taking in really as many of the fruits and vegetables that we should be taking in. And we are certainly far below on beans and legumes. Now, the reason why this is meaningful is because the entire category beans and legumes is it's, it's a category for a reason, if you want to think about it like this. So like we classify different foods based on what they're providing to our bodies. And the reason why there are different categories then is because these foods are providing different things for our bodies. So if you want to think of it in the most literal sense that we have categories of foods because they're each doing something different, they're each providing something different, and we have to have enough of all of those different categories in order to provide our bodies with everything that we need. And so beans and legumes specifically provide a variety of different fibers and starches that you will not get from other foods. You will not find them in other foods. They are unique to that category of foods of beans and legumes. Now, the reason why this is kind of a red flag that I'm like, well, we need to really zero in on this is because of how high, really the, uh, the high connection, you could say, the strong connection between beans and legumes in your diet with your overall gut health specifically and then with your overall physical and mental health, really as a secondary effect because of your gut health being optimized. And all of this is to say that your entire dietary intake is most likely pretty sufficient across the board if you are in fact including beans and legumes because otherwise everyone is not eating beans and legumes. So come on, let's all, we gotta like wake up and get back on on get back on the bean train here. <laughs> so if, if you're wondering then like, how do I start even incorporating this? Because I like, most of us have probably never even thought about needing to have certain food groups because we're just so familiar with what we've been told. And we've been told for, you know, ever of like basic meals that contain basically three ingredients. Like you need a chicken, you need a, or like a, like a protein or a meat, you need some vegetable and you need some kind of a starch. And there's rarely, if ever, the thought of how other, we'll say other classifications, other categories of foods would fit in because we've simplified our views of meals almost to a fault. We've, we've oversimplified, if anything. So to kind of like take a step back and to view where and when can I start to incorporate different beans and legumes into my diet so that way I'm gaining the benefit of them and not needing to like completely relearn or learn new things all over, all over the place, you know? So the quickest ways to start to add in any of the beans and legumes across that entire category into your diet, and this is really gonna help to diversify your diet overall, is to start slow, first of all. You can start very easily with different spreads. So think of like a hummus. So if you want to have like a snack that has like like a pita chip with hummus or veggies with hummus. So that's a very quick, easy way where you don't have to do anything. You just have to buy a, a thing of hummus, right? So you can start to add in, in that case, a legume. Hummus is coming from chickpeas. And you can add that in into your snacks on like a day-to-day -day basis. The next kind of layer would be, I would say, if you are having, let's say like lunches, start to add a serving of beans or legumes in some way to your lunches. So that could look like if you have a salad, maybe add uh, a serving of lentils to your salad or add a serving of chickpeas to your salad. You could add, you could add like peas to your salad. You could add really like, you could add any kind of bean to your salad, really. If you're having like a rice bowl or something, add black beans. If you're having, I don't know, I mean, any kind of bean really could add to rice. Literally any type of bean or legume could be added to anything if you really want to think about it. But just to put some ideas out there that like any kind of a lunch, for instance, that you're having, whether it's a salad or a rice bowl or burrito or 
or a sandwich or something. You can add some sort of a bean to the rice bowl or to the salad. You can add a spread to the sandwich. Like, so you can add hummus to a sandwich. These are all different ways to start to incorporate some of these beans and legumes into foods that you may already be eating. And you can also start to experiment a little bit and start adding things or trying new new uh, combinations, new recipes for different times of day. So if you're used to eating a breakfast that is very, very, uh, maybe a very typical like continental type of breakfast, maybe you want to change it up and start having some eggs and beans and veggies and have like some combination of foods and flavors that you wouldn't normally have at breakfast time, a breakfast burrito, you know, you can have some beans in the breakfast burrito. And all of these different ways that you can start to add in, like I said, across the board, any type of bean legume that you can add in, the more the merrier. Not necessarily the more the merrier, but the more variety, the better. So you want to start slow though. So start with one snack or one meal a day and then steadily, maybe after a couple of weeks that you're familiar with that, you're used to that, then add another serving to another meal and steadily give yourself another couple of weeks of that. And you want to really transition yourself into this way of viewing food and how you feel when you are eating these foods. So one thing to keep in mind when it comes to that entire category of foods of beans and legumes is how it's prepared and the best way that you can make this, if anything more, I'll say comfortable as you're eating all of these foods, you may start if it's not prepared well, you may feel bloated after eating some beans and legumes. So the best way to uh, combat that is to soak the beans. So have soaked beans, soak the beans yourself. You know, you, I, I always like to, I put a reminder on my phone because lentils take about four hours to soak before you cook them. So I have to put like a reminder on my phone to, oh, I gotta go soak my lentils. And then I put them, you know, in, in water, just let it soak for four hours and then drain the water and then, and then add more water so you can cook them. So that's all it takes is just a little extra foresight really before you're cooking them to make sure that you've prepared them well enough in advance that you're going to digest them that much better when you do eat them. And so that process of soaking beans is really just to help start to break down some of the starches that are otherwise really think of it like a dense starch. So it would have a little bit more work being done inside. So you might end up having a little bit of bloating or gas if you're having to break down the starches inside. So instead having uh, this process where you're just soaking beans before you cook them, that helps to break down the starches a little better. And you will feel phenomenal then when you do eat these beans because they are going to be so satiating. You're going to feel so full and satisfied after your meals that you're going to wonder where, why you never did this before. It really is like like a, a all of a sudden a, a perspective shift of like, wow, this entire food group is amazing. And I don't know why I avoided it <laughs> for the longest time. So start eating your beans, start and get, you know, beans and legumes. And if you're wondering about the difference between canned and dry, so there really isn't a difference when it comes to the nutritional content. If you are using canned beans, just rinse them before you cook them. Otherwise, if you have dry beans, then soak them, like I said. And you can just Google real quick based on the type of bean or legume of how long to soak it for because they're not all the same. So just have that little extra foresight so that way you are feeling your best when you do in fact eat them. Let me know if you learned something new today. If you have any other questions about this topic, please feel free to leave a comment and ask. Otherwise, please like, share, and subscribe so that we can spread the love and spread the light. All right. Thank you all. Bye-bye.